our first foodie, had one of the most epic comebacks in the history of Bravo's hit series, Top Chef, clawing her way back to the top after being eliminated to become season 10's winner. Since then, she's gone on to host TV shows, write her own cookbook, and open her own restaurant, Arlo Gray, in Austin, Texas, with a menu that merges fine dining with nostalgia, all that come together to define her style. Now, Kristen Kish is putting those techniques to the test on her true TV show. It's called Fast Foodies, taking a nostalgic fast food look at some of her favorites with favorite celebrities and putting her own personal twist on the classics from her home kitchen. Let's check it out. Kristen Kish! Hi, good morning. Good to see you. Likewise, thanks for having me. Kitchen Envy, I love all the white backsplash. I love it all. It looks great. Congratulations on everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Now, I, I love it. At your restaurant, you have dishes that tell the story of who you are on a plate. How did you come up with that concept? You know, I was in fine dining and Relay Chateau and really cooking with my head for a very long time. And so when it was time to open my own restaurant, I started to lean into sign of that same method. And what I realized, and I had this aha moment, like, I don't know, a few months into opening, I was like, well, wait, hold on. The only story that hasn't been told through food is my story. Oh. And my story is me, born in Korea, uh, adopted, raised in Michigan, schooled Chicago, traveled the world, and really loving Midwestern comfort food. Yeah, you know, you're gonna bring tears to my eyes, because one of the reasons I wanted to do this show, is thinking about, you know, I would come home from kindergarten, and get a grilled cheese, or my cousin would make literally fried bologna. I remember I said bologna <laughs> once, I got on TV and got in trouble. But you know, those are the things that take us back to our, our lives, our roots. Now, one of the dishes from your menu, particularly important to you, it's the foodie flashback you want to share with us today. What What's your foodie flashback? All right, so this is my favorite. So I'm gonna tell you where it comes from and okay. you might like twist your head a, a minute, but it's my homage to Hamburger Helper. Oh. So I grew up in Michigan, very okay. classic Midwestern upbringing, okay. very comfort, you know, a lot of things came out of boxes, but I do this without Hamburger Helper and I do it without hamburger in general. Okay, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. So you fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> so it's your homage a hamburger helper and all I can think of is that commercial that little hand yeah. <laughs> right. like, hey but you don't have beef in it and a hamburger nothing like it all right take me into yeah. this then I'm curious all right so I take the humble white button mushroom which was my first challenge win on Top Chef and uh -huh. kind of I guess where people realize that I could cook a mushroom uh -huh. um, so white humble, humble button mushroom and it you have varying different sizes. Right. So what you can do is find the smallest one, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to match the size. So you can use a knife, or oh. you can just crack okay, them right so in half. Okay, so find your smallest one, and then match the size. Why do we need to do that? Because we're going to cook the mushrooms in, like, three different stages. And so if they're all the same size, they will all cook the same way. Okay, I like that tip. All right, I've done that. All right, so we have all these button mushrooms, and then I have a grill rack, just like you. Mm -hmm. And essentially, all you're gonna do, and this is the first stage, you're gonna take that grill rack, you're gonna throw it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And what happens is all that moisture, because these are like sponges, and they don't yeah. have a ton of flavor yet. Yeah. So we're gonna throw those into the oven. Or gently place them. You look at you chefs with your loose language. Throw it in. <laughs> Liz, I'm gently placing it for the tam fam. And we roast it for so how long? About 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And so what happens is all that liquid just settles to the uh -huh. bottom, which is why I use a grill rack. And then we end up with something like you have and I have, where they're semi-dehydrated. So they're a little spongy. Oh. They have a little bit more flavor, but we're not quite there yet. Okay. So we're going to take these. So they went from this to this. Now they're in a pan caramelizing with a little bit of oil. And now this is where you start to smell that umami. I can smell it. So in the pan, we have those mushrooms that are caramelizing and roasting, and we're gonna add pearl onions. Okay. And so I understand in the restaurant, we use red pearl onions, but peeling and blanching little yeah. tiny pearl uh, onions is kind of a pain. Yeah. So you can buy them in the freezer section. No one's got time to peel. You more sizzle than I have. Let me catch up here. All right, okay. I'm working on my sizzle game. All right, I've got my pearl onions in. Once those pearl onions get a little bit of brown on the outside, we're gonna add our shallots. Ah, uh, so nice. Diced up shallot. Okay. And then we have chopped up garlic. This is a lot of garlic. I'm a fan. Damn fam, I'm a fan <laughs> of garlic. Listen. 
And especially when you garlic. roast when you roast that garlic and it gets nice and caramely and yeah. basically you want everything in this pan to start looking uh, like it went to the beach and got a beautiful tan. So okay. everything needs to be lightly <laughs> pulled. <laughs> All right, so we're looking for tanning on ours. And then we add wine and vermouth to deglaze the pan. Mm. Wine, vermouth, and fresh thyme. And you really want to develop the flavor. So taking time, every time you add an ingredient, giving it four or five minutes, four or five minutes every single okay. time. Here's what we're going to do. We're going right. to give a quick commercial break that's not four or five minutes because I'm hungry. Yeah. We'll be right back to finish <laughs> Kristen's homage to Hamburger Helper from a flashback of her past. After the break, we'll finish this off. We'll be back. We've been cooking with executive top chef winner and co-host of True TV's show, Fast Foodies, Kristen Kish. Now in the commercial break, full disclosure, we added heavy cream and chicken stock to our mushrooms and our onions. And we cook this down for how long? So we cook it down for about 15 minutes until it gets really, really thick and unctuous. You can, you can see how much that holds together. It's kind of like a, you could throw this on a steak or polenta right now, but to really kind of bring it home, we're gonna add all the finishing, which adds like that last bit of like notes of acid. Uh -huh. So we have red wine vinegar, which we're gonna add in. Everything, especially rich items like this, definitely need a hit of acid. Ooh. We're gonna use creme fraiche, oh, again, bet. because um, why not? Why not? <laughs> it's got a nice <laughs> tang to it. Why not? <laughs> By the way, the full recipe is on our social media page to check it out. While we're adding this creme fraiche in, real quick, tell me your true TV show, Fast Foodies, you recreate classic fast food dishes. That is, a, that's a dream show. I mean, it's basically kind of what we're doing here. So taking this point of inspiration, but my hope is when other people try it, it can kind of bring back maybe a, a comfort food that you like, or mm -hmm. maybe it's a gravy that you're Mom used to put on your steaks okay. when you were younger. I don't know, something. But for something. me, comfort food is a hug. It's salty, it's umami, it's mm. creamy, it's delicious. So once we added the creme fraiche, you don't want to boil it because it will separate. Okay. So we melted that creme fraiche in. It got a little bit looser, more yeah. sauce consistency. Uh -huh. And then we're going to add in pasta. So you can do store-bought pasta. I smuggled this pasta back from my restaurant in Austin. Well, you own the restaurant. You don't have to smuggle it. It's your place. I mean, it's your, <laughs> it's your place. Now, they gave me whole wheat pasta. Why? Do you like whole wheat pasta? I love whole wheat pasta because it adds a bit of nuttiness. It adds oh. another layer of flavor. This sauce is so creamy. It's rich. It's delicious. Something that kind of brings it home. I mean, this you could eat it in the summer, but this is like winter comfort. To me. I love that. So I have in my pan all that um, gorgeous sauce tossed wow. with this amazing pasta. Oh and all gosh. those bits like soaked into it. Oh yeah. This is incredible. How so are you gonna, now we're gonna finish it off? This is the big finish. Um, this is probably like serving for four, but you know what? Oh, that means it's my lunch and dinner. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. We're just gonna throw it all in there because why not? Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of fresh chopped parsley over the top. Oh my God. And then some Parmesan cheese. And we're gonna just oh my make God. it range as much as you want. Look at this. This is, okay, full disclosure, I was a little skeptical. I did not know what was gonna happen here. This looks amazing. Mm. It is absolutely all of that comfort is in this interpretation. Congratulations on everything. Oh, we love Thank you. When I'm in my home state of Texas and I get to Austin, I'm coming straight to your spot, okay? Thank Come you. Come on over. And you can catch season two of Fast Foodies Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on True TV.